Doing so, Mrs. Secretary Spellman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I'm setting out the next stage in the bovine TB eradication programme for England. Bovine TB continues to be a major problem in England. In 2010, nearly 25,000 cattle were slaughtered in England, and the cost to the taxpayer is set to top £1 billion over the next 10 years. The problem is particularly bad in the west and southwest of England, where 23% of cattle farms were unable to move stock off their premises at some point in 2010 due to being affected by the disease, causing much distress and hardship. As I explained in my statement in July, cattle measures, including routine testing and surveillance, pre movement testing, movement restrictions, and removal and slaughter of infected animals remain the foundation of our TB eradication programme. We have already strengthened cattle controls and will continue to do so. The Government is working in partnership with the farming industry and the veterinary profession to further promote good biosecurity and provide advice and support to farmers. We also intend to invest a further £20 million over the next five years to develop an effective cattle and oral badger vaccine as quickly as possible. We know that in order to tackle this disease, we need to look at each and every transmission route, and that includes transmission from badgers to cattle. Ultimately, we want to be able to vaccinate both cattle and badgers, but there are practical difficulties with the injectable badger vaccine, which right now is the only available option. Badgers have to be trapped and caged in order to administer it. As I told the House in July, we are working hard to develop a cattle vaccine and an oral badger vaccine, but usable and approved vaccine are still years away, and we can't say with any certainty when they will be ready. In the meantime, we cannot just do nothing. This terrible disease is getting worse and we've got to deal with the devastating impact it has on farmers and rural communities. It's difficult to quantify or put a monetary value on this, but a report by the Farm Crisis Network describes the feelings of panic, stress and emotional devastation for farming families as they repeatedly have to send their cows to be slaughtered. I think we'd all agree that we need to stop the disease spreading further, yeah, yeah. to bring it under control and ultimately eradicate it. Evidence tells us that unless we tackle the disease in badgers, we will never eradicate it in cattle. No country in the world that has TB in its wildlife has been able to eradicate it in cattle without addressing it in the wildlife population. In July, I set out revised proposals for controlling the disease in the badger population. In order to reduce TB in cattle in the worst affected areas, we proposed to allow a controlled reduction carried out by groups of farmers and landowners as part of a science-led and carefully managed policy of badger control. The policy would be piloted initially in two areas in the first year. Following the responses to the consultation on draft guidance to Natural England that we launched in July, the policy has been further refined and I'm now in a position to announce that we will go ahead with a pilot of the policy in two areas next year to confirm our assumptions about the effectiveness, humaneness and safety of controlled shooting. An independent panel of experts will oversee and evaluate the pilots and report back to government, and we will then decide whether the policy should be rolled out more widely. This has not been an easy decision to make, and it is not one I have taken lightly. I have personally considered all the options and all the evidence, and at the present time there is no satisfactory alternative. Today I am publishing a detailed policy document copies of which will be available in the vote office after this statement. We need to strike a balance between the actions needed to control and eradicate this disease, maintaining a viable cattle industry, and using our resources in the most effective and efficient way possible. 
Badger control licenses will be issued by Natural England under the Protection of Badgers Act 1992 to enable groups of farmers and landowners in the worst affected areas to reduce badger populations at their own expense. Guidance to Natural England sets out such criteria, that are strict criteria, that applicants for a licence will have to meet to ensure that the pilots are carried out safely, effectively and humanely. Scientists agree that if culling is conducted in line with the strict criteria identified from the randomised badger culling trial, we will expect it to reduce TB in cattle over a 150 square kilometre area plus a two kilometre surrounding ring by an average of 16% over nine years relative to a similar unculled area. Licences granted by Natural England will be subject to strict conditions based on evidence from the randomised badger culling trial designed to ensure that the result is an overall decrease in the disease in the areas where it takes place. Applications for licences will only be considered for an area of at least 150 square kilometres over a minimum of four years, and with the pilots to be conducted by trained and proficient operators. Groups of farmers will have to take reasonable measures to identify barriers and buffers such as rivers, coastline and motorways or areas where there are no cattle or where vaccination of badgers occurs at the edge of culling areas to minimise the perturbation effect, where disturbing the badger population could cause an increase in TB and cattle in the surrounding area. Having assessed the known and estimated effects of badger culling and vaccination, DEFRA veterinary and scientific advice is that culling in high TB incidence areas carried out in line with the licence criteria will reduce the number of infected badgers and thus the weight of TB infection in badger populations in the treatment area more quickly than vaccination and therefore have a greater and more immediate beneficial impact on the spread of TB to cattle and the incidence of infection in cattle. Nevertheless, we still see a useful role for vaccination, particularly in the future. I have listened carefully to the views of groups who would like to help develop a vaccination programme. So to support and encourage vaccination, DEFRA will make available up to £250,000 in each of the next three years to help meet the costs of badger vaccination in accordance with a badger control plan, with priority given to areas where culling is licensed. We will also support staff or volunteers of voluntary sector organisations wishing to train to carry out vaccination. I look to the farming industry to show that they take their responsibility very seriously and they are committed to delivering this programme effectively, safely and humanely. This will be carefully monitored in the pilots and on an ongoing basis if the policy is rolled out more widely. To select the pilot areas, I will be inviting the farming industry to come forward with a short list of areas from which DEFRA will select two. These two areas will then be invited to apply for a culling licence. Natural England will assess the applications against the licence criteria and decide whether or not to grant them a licence. Following conclusion of the six-week pilots, from what we observe and what we learn and taking into account the evaluation by the independent panel we will then take a decision on whether to roll out the policy more widely. Following the pilots, if we decide to proceed with a wider rollout, a maximum of 10 licences will be granted to start each year. Ensuring public safety is a key concern. In finalising the policy, we have worked closely with the Home Office and the Association of Chief Police Officers to scope out the role of the police in supporting these licensed operations. Mr Speaker, I know there is great strength of feeling on this issue, but I also know that we need to take action now before the TB situation deteriorates even further. We need to tackle TB from all angles, using all available tools. I am acutely aware that many people are opposed to the culling of badgers, and I wish there were a current satisfactory alternative. But we can't escape the fact that the evidence supports the case for a controlled reduction of the badger population in the areas worst affected by bovine TB. The impacts of this terrible disease also show us that we need to act now. We cannot keep delaying. 
In making this decision, I have considered all the evidence and I have listened to the full range of views. Having listened to all sides of the debate, I believe that this approach is the right one to take. Yeah. Mary Cray. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, we recognise that bovine TB is a devastating disease, which is why, in government, Labour spent £50 million on the randomised badger culling trials. Any decision on a badger cull must answer four key questions. Is it science-led? Is it cost-effective? Yeah. Is it humane? And crucially, will it work? Yeah. Yeah. First, the science. The Independent Scientific Group on Cattle TB into Labour's trial culls said, after careful consideration of all the RBCT and other data in this report, we conclude Badger culling cannot meaningfully contribute to the future control of cattle TB in Britain. Mr Speaker, the Secretary of State quotes scientists who told the government that TB in cattle will be cut by 16% over nine years if the cull is carried out by trapping and then shooting the animals. But her culls will not be carried out in that way. They will depend on farmers hiring people to free shoot badgers at night a method that has never been scientifically assessed as a way of controlling bovine TB. Mr Speaker, we know that perturbation occurred in the first three years of Labour's trial culls when badgers were humanely captured. What scientific advice has she sought or received?